Okay, so here's the design of a typical boiler. Cold water in from the bottom. Cold water comes in the bottom. And it's still in a liquid form when it comes in. So you don't need as much volume. Mm -hmm. As the water heats up, it travels upward, gets hotter and hotter. You start forming steam bubbles. Well, then that, that expands. So you need a, a, a larger sur a surface area, a larger volume, so that can expand. So you start with the small tubes, you go to a larger tube, mm -hmm. okay? it gets hotter, you go to an even larger tube. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, once you've done that, um, uh, just a quick note here. You notice the center is plugged. Okay. That's because the, the, the heat's gonna the fire, the heat's gonna have a tendency to follow the path of least resistance. Okay. So you plug that because you're gonna get a lot of wasted heat to shoot right straight through that hole. Uh-huh. Okay, so you plug that. That forces the air to go around the coils. Okay, so all right, now, the water and the gases are getting hotter and hotter, and they're expanding. Then, you pump it into this water wall. After the superheater? No, the superheater is the last thing, okay? This is where the combustion chamber comes in, because you get even more heat transfer because this is the next to the hottest area. So the water's rising, turning into steam, expanding, comes up the water wall, out of the water wall, and back down to The superheater. Typically, your your superheater is made of a heavier material, like the Schedule 160 black pipe, or stainless. This is stainless. Mm -hmm. It'll take much higher temperatures, and it's stronger. However, the drawback with stainless steel is. <clears throat> Your heat transfer characteristics are not as good as black iron pipe. That's why so many people use black iron instead of stainless. Now if you have a hotter fire, you can use stainless because then it doesn't matter about your heat transfer characteristics. You have a hotter fire, so the heat will just transfer automatically. When you say hotter, what temperature? <clears throat> 2300 degrees. With a pellet burner, unless you really charge it with a lot of air, you're not going to get eight or nine hundred or a thousand degrees, or you may max out at a thousand degrees. With your liquid fuel burner, you can get twenty-three hundred degrees fairly easily, but you still have to have the right amount of fuel air ratio, otherwise. You, you get the problem of carbon, carbon, and uh, uh, unburned fuel, and then it settles on your coils, and then you lose your heat transfer characteristics. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we've come up the water wall. This is the water wall. It's gathering heat. It's 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 absorbing heat from the combustion chamber, which gets it even hotter. Well then, we, you can't, we don't have the, uh, the transfer tube here, but it came up and it came outside the boiler and then back in to the superheater. And the superheater basically sat in here and, uh, and in and out, let's see, i got to find the, well unfortunately this is disassembled, but this, this, there would be a space in here where this this uh, came out the side. Mm -hmm. So 
Now, from up here, we ran our, our steam into the superheater. And this is directly underneath the flame. Mm -hmm. Coming out the bottom of your combustion chamber. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is sitting here, and you've just you've got you've got this intensive heat touching these coils, mm -hmm. and it was so intense that that's why we got the blowout of this coil, because the superheater was on top of this and was basically protecting it, mm -hmm. but the flame was still so hot. And the boiler was so old that that just expanded because of the internal pressures. Because your, your, your steam temperature and your steam pressure are directly related. Okay? Water boils at 212 degrees. Well, at 212 degrees, you can develop between 150 and 200 PSI of steam. As you raise that temperature and go... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, a thousand degrees, the pressures inside your boiler are relative. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, a thousand psi. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the heat is coming down on this superheater, and that's where it, quote, the term dries the steam. And the drier the steam you have, uh, the more efficient your engine is going to run, the less condensation you're going to get inside the engine because if your engine is closer to the, to the boiler, you have less heat loss before you get to the engine, causing less conden condensation. But as, as the steam enters the cylinder of the engine and expands, that causes condensation in and of itself because it's expanding into an area um, uh, with a massive pressure drop because it comes in at, say, 500 PSI. Well, as the cylinder travels down, you automatically have more, val more volume. The, heat exp the steam expands even further but then it cools. It's just the natural reaction or a natural uh, uh, phenomenon. So you exhaust the steam, your, your piston comes back up, and you start all over. You inject, you know, the valve opens, you inject the high pressure steam, it expands, causes the rotation of the engine or the motion, the reciprocating motion, uh, steam cools as it expands. Well, then after it exhausts, it, it, the pressure drop is even more, even greater, and then it starts to condense even more. That's why we reclaim the steam to make it more efficient. You reclaim the steam, drop it into a hot well, through a condenser and then into a hot well. But then you have the problem of the, the engine oil and the steam oil being mixed with the steam, so you need a separator to get that out. Now, it's possible to get your steam too hot. So then they have what they call a normalizer. And I'll show you that on the new boiler.